Hi friends, I'm Prairie Vintage. My name's Linda. I'm an energy intuitive reader here on YouTube. I use spirit, my intuition, and the tarot to communicate energies to you guys. Beautiful viewers, thank you so, so much for joining me today. I am so grateful and so, so blessed to be here today. You guys are all very safe and welcome in this space with me today. We are going to be doing a twin flame reading. So if you are aware of the fact that you have a soul connection with somebody, um, it could certainly be your twin flame, then you clicked on this video for a reason. As my cat scratches on the door, just give me one second. My cat likes to confirm uh, certain messages. So. What I was about to say um, is that this reading is taking a look at the twin flame journey overall. Where are you at with this person and then guidance? Okay, so it's going to be um, for those of you guys who are aware you're in this uh, on this journey. And then for those of you guys who are not so sure, this could serve as some sort of confirmation here. Okay, so take a look at these four decks to choose from. Pile number one, we have the Mystic Mondays Tarot. Option number two, we have the Grimalkin's Curious Cats Tarot. Option number three, we have the Movie Tarot. And for option number four, we have the Wizard's Tarot. And I have not used these cards yet, so I don't know. In fact, yeah, these are the only cards I have not used yet. So I don't want to influence anything here. I just want you guys to use your intuition to guide you into whichever pack you feel most called towards. Please keep in mind that I am reading your energy and the energy around you. And sometimes your energy comes through pre predominantly. So I don't know how this reading will go. If it sounds mostly like your energy, then it could certainly be that your person's predominant energy is in another pile although we are looking at the connection as a whole and um it's okay if you tap into a pile and it sounds like it's either old energy or just not resonating then you can go check out a different pile okay um and it's also okay to not resonate with anything don't make it fit it is a collective reading so this is going to be for select people who are needing to hear this message today all right i love you very very much i will see you guys at your pick the timestamp will be in the description box and in the pinned comment below it will take you directly to your pick and i will see you there hello my gorgeous pile one you pick the mystic mondays tarot for your reading now we will be taking a look at the twin flame connection you and this person have a soul connection and you want to know where you're at in this journey with this person. So we will ask spirit for that exactly. And then we will get some advice as well. What are you supposed to be doing? Um, and then, of course, see whatever spirit wants to communicate. All right. So now, please keep in mind, this is an Internet reading. So I cannot tell you what it is that you have to do. All I can do is read the energy as I see it. So it is up to you. Use your intuition to see if this is something that resonates with you, something you see, feel, or hear that can confirm to you this message is indeed your message. All right, beautiful pile one. Thank you so, so much. I am so blessed to be here. Thank you for allowing me to tap into your energy. Spirit, please protect me and the viewer as I channel this message for the greatest and highest good of pile one. What's going on with pile one and their soul person, their twin flame? A person in this connection where are they at what's going on in this journey thank you so much we have the sword and rose clarity truth revelation solidarity force honor protection power oh my goodness all right let's see hopefully these readings get better and better clear and concise spirits we have trust oh my goodness truth trust so far, we're on a diddly diddly very good path. All right. Spirit, clearing concise message for pile one. We have the hen. All right. I do feel one more of these. And we have the lion. Oh my goodness. Okay. Um, I don't know if I mentioned this. I know I mentioned it in the intro. 
if this is predominantly your energy, your person's energy could be in another pile, okay? Although this is about the connection itself. Sometimes one energy overtakes the reading and energies could be spread amongst multiple piles. So if you were called to another pile, it could certainly have multiple messages, different aspects of the same connection. All right, so spirits, what do we have? We have five high... Five, five with breakthrough processing karmic debris feel one more we have nine nine with high priest personal empowerment and we will pull one of these these are too hard to shuffle that way let's do this for pile one spirit clear and concise message one and one more there's your card right there all right so we have awareness 11 the energy of awareness supports our capacity to focus our attention on all aspects of a multi-dimensional world so that we create a reality that we truly choose and we have joy 28 or the number 10 10 11 Okay, it says the energy of joy activates our feelings of happiness and well-being and supports a high vibrational frequency in our being. Okay, and now we'll pull tarot. We're almost there. Spirit, clear and concise message for pile one. What's going on in their connection with their person? Thank you so much, spirits. Where are they at in this journey? overall we have the queen of pentacles earth energy virgo taurus capricorn we have the six of swords i'm going to read them as they come out it's in reverse seven of wands ten of cups two more spirit very concise message for the highest good of power one where are they at in this journey king of swords and one more and the six of wands okay the king of swords is air energy gemini libra aquarius i will take a look at the bottom of the deck we have the five of pentacles and the ten of pentacles under that okay i'm gonna just put these over here just give me a minute to tap into this energy, all right? This is an interesting energy pile one so i'll let you sort out who's who but i do feel two energies here and i don't know so much if it's your old energy now shifting or has shifted to new energy and you might have felt an energy shift and this is confirmation or if this is um you and your person showing up here it's very difficult for me to tell or if this is your person and them past and now kind of shifting into the present i know that's a lot but um i'm just reading energy so hard for me to attribute it to someone and because the energy of twin flames is essentially very similar with the mirroring being the same soul it to me feels like it's the same person although it does not have to be because the energy is completely different so after all of that being said i feel like there's an energy here of someone who was in a not in a very good place like feeling very much at the whim or the mercy of what was happening to them like really um having zero control not understanding anything and not trusting in anything that the divine was trying to guide them towards so as we know these journeys are highly spiritual and we are being called to fulfill um, 
what we're supposed to be doing here, which is getting closer to our authentic self. Okay, closer, closer to one source of God. Um, and that's essentially what this journey does. And so I feel like what's happened here is an energy of somebody kind of being in a, allowing just things to happen to an energy of empowerment, okay, with this personal empowerment and this lion. Um, and I feel like this is a really big breakthrough in this, in the shift in this connection, because someone in this connection has had a breakthrough. Now that could be you or your person, but they finally started to trust in the process and in themselves. Um, and I feel like trusting in themselves to not second guess or to resist what was going on. So I feel like someone is has awakened to accepting what this connection is because I think for some time they've been very um, closed off, but I feel like is a very passive sort of energy, like not necessarily, um, I did say resistance for a reason, but I don't know so much if it was resistance or just folding to, I don't know, like feeling as though they had zero control, folding to allowing just, I don't know, like, um, I'll pull some more cards because I don't really necessarily know what this person was folding to, but I feel like it's almost like a, not like surrendering in a, in a good way, like surrendering to the journey, but kind of feeling very not good. Okay. Um, because they felt they had no control here. So I do feel as though, um, I'm picking up now, if this is your energy here, I do feel as though previous to this journey, I, I'm picking up that you were somebody who was fairly all together. Okay. Um, and I, and you're still all together. You haven't lost any part of you, but what I mean by all together is I, I think in this worldly, uh, plane in the 3d or somebody who had, um, a stable life, like you're most likely either a parent a wife, um, a working person, a person who was pretty solid, uh, I'd say here. Um, and I feel like this connection has caused a lot of mental conflict and a lot of strife. And so I feel like you've been more in a, in an energy of, um, now resistance is coming up again. I see. So I feel like the surrender part was you were really working on trying to figure out what part of your existing life, I guess. Okay. The life before this journey, I think happened, um, what you were supposed to do with that. Like, were you supposed to fight for it? Were you supposed to figure something out? Were you supposed to let go and detach or surrender from that. Like, I feel like there's a lot of question marks here and, and you could certainly be going through that because I did ask where you're at here in the journey. And this is the, the energy that I'm getting, but I feel as though it's kind of an older energy because what I feel the shift here is going into an empowered sort of energy. And, um, I feel like there is, um, an understanding here that, there is more control in this journey than I guess what was initially thought. So I do feel like that gives some peace of mind. Um, because I do feel as though up until now, things have just been kind of happening rather than there being an active sort of um, engagement in trying to figure out what it is that you can do to get empowered. Okay. Now, like I said, it, maybe it could be your person, but I do feel two different energies here, especially, um, with the tarot. I feel as though, um, your energy is coming up as this queen of pentacles. And I do feel your person's energy coming up as this king of swords. Okay. And king of swords is someone who is more mental than they are, um, acting out of a heart space here. And I feel like there's still some ego here. Um, in regards to this King of Swords right beside this Six of Wands. 
Um, so I feel like what's coming through is your part in this journey. Okay, spirit. So that your part in this journey, I feel was really mixed up. Okay, mixed up because I think you were very confused, um, which is normal. I'm not shaming you by any means. These are very confusing connections. Try reading cards and energy and all that because it makes it even more confusing. And I'm not trying to keep it confusing. I'm trying to keep it very clean and easy. Okay, I'm an easy gal. I like it easy. So what's easy here is that it started very confusing for you. None of this made sense. So you felt like a, a kind of almost like a victim. Okay, and you most likely were experiencing this victim sort of experience because I think things were happening here um, that really challenged where you were at and you had to look at this and I feel like there might have been a lot of resistance and a lot of mental conflict and I feel like you've been working through releasing any karmic sort of energies that were existing in your life previous to this journey taking place so that's been taking up a lot of your energy rightfully so because i feel like this is something that needed to get processed in order to kind of graduate to the next stage so i do feel there's a breakthrough now okay but i feel like your person could be potentially um i'm going to dig into it but could be potentially not really progressing in any sort of way here okay i don't i don't know that this person's been progressing or doing anything um because I feel like the energy has been solely in your hands. You were the one sort of needing to do something here uh, in order for the next sort of step here in this connection. And I feel like it has been pretty difficult, but I feel like um, this was dealing with things kind of more in a material world. Like, I don't know, you're existing home life i guess or your existing matrix world um and that sort of thing like what you were giving your energy to and kind of questioning and looking at this and, and making decisions i guess but i think being driven by this connection and understanding of there being a potential for a ten of cups which i feel you are seeing in this connection um so the only little piece I get here um, of the other person here is somebody who is kind of on standby as somebody is suffering, okay? And I know that sounds painful, especially if you're the one kind of suffering. And as we know in these journeys, um, we walk through the darkness to find the light. Um, but I feel like you're on this turning point to this breakthrough. I'm going to let my cat in. Give me a second. Sorry about that. He likes to scratch when the door is closed and it closed on him again. Okay, so... Uh, I'm going to pull a little bit more here. I wasn't intending on doing another row, but it, it's a little bit murky. And so I know this makes sense to somebody. Okay. This makes sense to somebody. It's not making full, full, uh, complete sense um, if you're not in this situation. But I do feel as though there was somebody here who was completely upside down uh, from what they're used to. And I do feel like this person is someone who is fairly solid, grounded, had their ish together and then just was kind of lost there for some time but i feel like what is happening and the biggest message here is this person is now having a breakthrough is now seeing the truth in a situation is now getting empowered is now saying what can i do in this journey in order to make things better so i can heal so i can move forward so i can ascend so i can do what's in my highest good which are all very good questions rather than, you know, what's sort of going on here, maybe with my person so much as what can I do within my world that is right. And because I feel there was a lot of resistance at one point to surrendering parts of self, which I mean, we don't have to completely surrender our whole life, but on these journeys, sometimes it does require us surrendering everything we know. And that is difficult. That is a soul death. Okay. So, or an ego death where we have that dark night of the soul and we then come out the other side as a complete different person. 
not knowing what the heck has happened to us. Okay, so I do feel there is a, a really good turn here because it's empowered. It is finding the happiness. It is in line with truth. It is in line with being on plan to where exactly this person's supposed to be on this journey. Okay, um, whereas the other person is kind of on standby. I don't think this person has been involved so much other than I think the message here is very strong that this person sees a potential and this person is open energetically in the 5D to the potential of this connection. Although this person is, I don't feel this person has done anything and this person is sitting in ego because I feel like this is a divine masculine that is behind the divine feminine in doing his work because as we know these journeys are generally led by the divine feminine that uh, doesn't mean anything to do with gender okay because we have a lot of masculines here that um are playing the role of the divine feminine when it comes to this journey and the masculine divine masculine gets triggered by the progress that the divine feminine does spiritually okay she's doing lots of soul work and when it comes to twin flames, they share the same energy when it comes to the soul. So the divine feminine is influencing the top three chakras. That's why she's more spiritual. She's more intuitive. She's more in touch with the divine, right? And the masculine it rules the lower chakras. So he's more primal. He's more in the, um, the root and the sacral and the solar plexus. Okay. So uh, generally these connections start with a spiritual understanding and nothing in this 3d world makes sense that's why the divine feminine gets flipped upside down she doesn't understand because what she thinks is happening is all in her head mental and she's stuck okay and she, and if she everyone's intuitive okay to a certain a certain capacity although if she's not developed this her intuition and she's stuffed it down and she hasn't been in touch with spirituality, she then makes some sort of prison for herself where she doesn't know if she's going crazy or if this means something, okay? So it's, it's very confusing and very painful. So I feel like she's now coming out of this. She's empowered. She now knows she's not crazy. She now knows there's a higher calling. She now knows that there's a truth here. She now knows she's in charge of herself, okay? So let's pull some um, here for the Divine Masculine, although I don't know that we're going to see a whole lot because I feel like with these journeys, Spirit wants the, um, the journey to go exactly as it's supposed to without, you know, heavy uh, interference here from outside world because this is an inner journey. You're supposed to lean on your intuition, which means, you know, you can listen to tarot readings and synchronicities and all that if it resonates then that's exactly where you were led and that's why i continue to do these but do not let something deter you from your path okay so only if this resonates for you but spirit's not going to communicate what you're not needing to know um if you're not needing to know it or if it's going to impact this journey in a uh, more of a negative karmic way so what's going on here with this divine masculine with the other energy spirit of this king of the king of swords what's going on with this king of swords all right so we have temperance and we have the ace of pentacles in reverse we have the three of swords in reverse we have the wheel of fortune and then we have the nine of wands in reverse okay so what's going on is exactly as i was picking up energetically i feel like right now um he feels fairly balanced, okay? Because I, I feel like there isn't really anything that's flipped his world upside down. And this is part of what drives the Divine Feminine possibly thinking she's crazy because how could she be experiencing all this stuff and the Divine Masculine not understanding um, potentially what is going on here? So there is some, some balance here going on with this uh, King of Swords, although I feel like he's balanced in a way that he's generally been balanced. I don't feel like he is healed. I feel like he's in for some healing. I feel like he is needing to um, take a look at himself at some point in time once he gets kind of triggered onto this journey. But I feel like he's not making any offer here to the Divine Feminine, okay? if Like I said, I'm going to read it like you're the Divine Feminine here. There hasn't been an offer. 
Um, so there hasn't been any movement and there hasn't been any healing. There hasn't been any work on self or uh, discovering anything here. Now, this is confirmation to me that this is a faded soul connection with the Wheel of Fortune. And this is also confirmation to me for uh, the viewer here, if you're resonating with the Divine Feminine, that things are going to move forward. Okay, that you are safe, that you've had a breakthrough, that things are now moving for the better. You're not in purgatory. You're not in a mental prison. You're now kind of open to the next phase here in this journey. And I do feel as though the Divine Masculine um, isn't triggered right now. Okay, I don't feel he's triggered. And I feel like if anything, he might still have to... Um, I don't know. I was, I'm not going to say it has to get triggered, but I feel like something here is going to make him at least question here um, so that he can kind of do whatever he needs to do here to take a look at self and connection, which I don't feel has happened um, with this pile yet, okay? Especially with this Three of Swords here in the reverse. I feel like there's still healing that's going to be um required here and he'll he's going to be stuck and not being able to move forward or offer anything until the healing is um is underway so another message coming through before i go into the advice cards or the message of guidance from spirit because I feel this energy, um, it, it feels long to me, okay? And I don't know, I can't. I don't want to say this journey is like super long, but this is kind of what I'm picking up here. Um, and I don't normally see when I read cards such a long spread, but I, I feel like what Spirit is really giving me energetically here is it is going to be a long process. So although I say it is moving forward for the better, you might be thinking your pain is no longer going to be in suffering, okay? And I feel as though that there is still pain here that you're going to be experiencing because I feel like when the Divine Masculine goes through what he needs to go through because something's going to trigger him, okay? And when he gets triggered, it's not fun for the Divine Feminine at all, okay? Because he's still up to his shenanigans and running and this, that, and the other, but it's not the same sort of situation you were in mentally when this started so although i say it's moving the journey is moving forward because every separation every pain that we experience but we learn from and we learn to detach from that pain or learn the lesson of why we had that pain to begin with and we understand it on a soul level then we're able to move and graduate to the next phase and the next phase and what that does is we slowly get into union because once we shine the light on these dark parts of ourselves, ourselves, right? Then we are able to come to one with our, with our partner here, okay? But if we're not learning and if we're refusing, rejecting, running, resisting, okay, um, all the R's, if we're doing that, then the journey gets stalled. The journey doesn't move forward. The journey doesn't progress, okay? But if we're hurting, and it's new hurt, if we're learning, but we're still hurting, then it's still progressing. If we're um, seeing the Divine Masculine um, doing things differently, uh, then we're still seeing progress. Whether it's doing something different um, in a way that doesn't help the connection, but it's still different, it's still a lesson to be learned, okay? I hope this makes sense to you guys because I don't want to tell you, well, things are all going for the better and then you're like, you know, a month later, you're like, what's with this this clown because he's blocking me and he's being weird. He's being weird and a clown because he's also going through whatever he needs to go through. Now, I do want to put this out there before I get a bunch of comments. I don't endorse any sort of... Um, mental physical abuse okay and these connections because sometimes these might look like uh empath and narcissist uh, connections and i always say that we all have a little bit of narcissism in us we're all unhealed until we awaken and so when we're unhealed we do things subconsciously meaning we're not doing it out of our free will because we're not even aware of what we're doing we're reacting okay we're just reacting so when we react it is sometimes painful for other people. So these journeys, unless you've gone through it, you understand that your twin flame could never hurt you. 
okay, does not want to cause you malintent, does not deliberately do something here to make pain for you on purpose, okay? This is a very deep soul-soul love that transcends any other connection that you've been in. And so you'll know, okay, if this is someone who's abusive or who's just not treating you right and you've been in this connection and this person is whatever, not right, um, and they've been the same way forever, this, this is not this person and this is not a twin flame connection, okay? Not a soul connection. So I hope this helped for some of you guys. Uh, Taurus is coming up very strong here. Um, Spirit wanted me to mention. We also have Sagittarius coming through. Um, and like I, I was telling you guys with the King of Swords, there are uh, air energy and earth energy. Okay, so let's get you guys some guidance, what you're supposed to kind of be doing, because all you can really do is empower yourself. You can't do anything to change your twin or to trigger anything further, you can only focus on what you need to do. So we'll pull three of those and three of these. Okay, so what do we have here? We have Surrender to the beauty of the natural world. Beautiful. Taking, oh, sorry. Take a relaxing break and spend time in nature. Replenish yourself by feeling the beauty and the ecstasy there. I feel as though you're being asked to have patience because I do feel as though you guys might be taking turns here. And when this divine masculine is going through something here, uh, the best way spirits wanting you to maintain patience is to get one with nature, right? So um walking is very good um you know swimming is very good as well if you're um able to to swim in either beach water ocean water um that might be best but um water is very therapeutic so anything that you can do here to allow yourself to stay grounded okay because it's easy to get ungrounded especially i feel you're coming out of an energy here that's been very ungrounding, okay, mentally exhausting. So you're tired. There's a need to detach from what's going on here um, and just allow yourself to get grounded. Surrender to passion. Get out of your own head. Yes. Feel the fire in your belly. Focus on people or activities that ignite your passion and let it flow. So if your divine masculine is coming around and you're feeling passionately um, inspired to progress then definitely allow yourself to be open do not resist okay because i feel like if you're trying to resist uh, because you're mad or you remember something here that's ego based okay that means more work you got to do because remember we act out of a place of love all the time when we ascend we are always asking what does the heart want right now we don't say how can i get even how can i make him pay how can i make him suffer the same way i suffered we don't do that you can do this but this means you are still then very much needing to go through the journey of surrendering um and ascension which is all about what would love do right now okay so if you feel from your heart space like giving love allow yourself to give love no need to fear okay and i know it's scary because when we think we're going to be used then we get very guarded and defensive okay um which is normal um and if you don't want to do something don't do it okay so this is going to be a very tough lesson here because it is hard to do it is hard to do and our ego and our mind keep chirping at us suspecting the worst okay and when we experience it we get very very hurt so there's a need for you to keep this in mind but get out of your own head and allow yourself to be open and keep questioning yourself okay is this my ego or is this out of love unconditional love towards this person despite an outcome here despite them wanting me or us coming together is this the best thing for this person uh, and me in this connection. Okay, so there is a need for you to keep this top of mind. Surrender your addictions, whether you're addicted to substances, food, people, sex, or overworking. Take action to begin to heal the addiction and replace it with healthier alternatives. So this is devil energy. So I do feel like now that you're awake, now that you see some truth, now that you know the power's in your hands, I feel like there's a shift here. Like I said, you're now empowered, but I feel like you're empowered to know you can do something. But I don't feel like you've done 
what you're kind of needing to do. And what I feel you're needing to do is focus on what you can within yourself. Are you addicted to things that are not healthy? Are you addicted to certain foods, uh, social media, uh, people, um, substances, whatever's going on here that I feel you are still attached to is needing your attention right now. Okay. Which is hard when we're consumed mentally by someone else, but that's again, detaching from mind, shifting it back to self, shifting it back to self. What can I do on self in order to detach from my addictions to get healthy? Okay. To get closer to what I'm supposed to be doing here. So that's your focus. We have wombat spirit be at home with 68 so be at home this is um certainly coming home to self this is allowing yourself to be without judgment okay so when we're at home we can walk around with no pants and feel perfectly fine we don't make judgment we don't think oh my i don't know my butt looks big or i'm looking like this or people are judging me we're comfortable and we are ourselves so i feel like there is a need for you to understand throughout the rest of this journey you can watch this video again because i have a feeling easily we're going to forget this and easily we're going to forget this that we don't need to judge ourselves that we can be ourselves and still progress in this journey to accept ourselves how we are but always tie it back to is this coming from a place of love not say i'm a, I'm a jealous person and i command respect and putting that out there saying okay but let's take a look deeper into this okay deeper into what do we command that we don't have within ourselves? If someone treats us not pleasant, we just don't engage because we are all that we need. We don't need respect from other people. If they're unwilling to give it, we move on. We don't pull it out of someone. We don't suffer until someone gives it to us. We just allow ourselves to go where there is respect. Okay, so be at home. Don't judge yourself. It's going to be a journey of you getting comfortable with who you truly are and accepting and questioning. Is this who you are or who you used to be or who you are conditioned to believe that you are? Okay. Buffalo spirits. Number 10, the abundant universe will provide. This is the knowing that everything will work out in divine timing. This is knowing when you need something, it's going to show up. You don't need to go search it out. You don't need to spend hours and hours understanding the logic behind what's happening. You can because our mind sometimes wants to understand, but I feel like it's just going to keep you in a mental loop, okay? It's going to keep you in a mental prison. The more information you get, the more you need to know, the more confusion, and then it starts to impact your actions. But we just need to be at home. We don't need to be taught how to be when we just be ourselves. When we be ourselves, no internet reading is going to help us because we are the only ones that can be ourselves. I can't tell you what your self is, okay? And I'm talking about your unconditioned self, your true self, your authentic self, okay? But trust that the universe is providing to you people, things, and advice and guidance right when you need it. It does come. Okay, don't lose faith and trust in the abundance that the universe will provide. And 25, elephant spirit learn from the past. So I do feel like you're going to repeat cycles here with this person until a lesson is learned. Okay, and sometimes we learn it quickly within one sort of experience. And sometimes the lesson is more difficult and we got to keep learning it. And then we get angry and frustrated with self. We start to make judgments. We start to question if the universe is on our side. This is saying, when something happens, we need to really look within and say, how did I have an active role in what's happened here? Now, that doesn't mean that if someone's mean, you automatically say it's your fault. But that means if you are in an environment where someone is mean, okay, where you perceive them to be mean, where you're not liking the energy that you feel around that instance, we ask ourselves, why are we in this energy? And nobody has control over how we engage with this energy okay so nobody can be mean they can be themselves and they could be in shadow and we can see it and we can extend forgiveness and we can not engage okay or we can you know focus on the love the light and if we have to if we're frustrated we can not say anything at all but if we're strong enough we can extend a kind word of love okay um just Learning from the past, I think, is important because sometimes it drives you batty. Um, if you're going through repeat here with the same person, 
Well, you start to question all of it and you start to go back to addictions and you start to question the universe and you start to not know then who you are. Then you start to be closed off and, and it feels like you're going back to the beginning. What, you know, and it could be months in and you're like, damn it. Like, did I learn anything? Am I progressing? Am I just doing cycles? I'm going absolutely nuts. This is what I feel. So I do feel this is an early stage here, but not like super beginning, but I feel like you now understand what you're on. Okay, understand um, the journey that you're on here. Um, and I think you might be kind of on the upswing now. So I don't want to deter you and say it's it's going to be difficult, but I do want to prepare you and say it's going to be difficult um, if you fall into the same pit holes that matrix people do. And unfortunately, a high percentage of us are still matrixy. This is why this is happening. You're being awakened. Okay, when you're ascended, when you're conscious and aware, this is less painful. You can now spot this. You can now spot when someone's triggering uh, triggering you out of shadow. It doesn't trigger your shadow. This feels like a lecture. I hope I'm helping. This was supposed to be guidance. Um, you know, this is certainly coming through as spirits and coming through as experience. Um, so I know what spirit is talking about here. This for me is very clear. Okay, this message is coming through clear. So if you resonate with that's where you're at at the journey, then this is kind of something that maybe you need to play on repeat. Do not um, listen to everybody, listen to yourself, because if you listen to everybody, you're going to get lost, okay? And you're going to get frustrated and you're going to question yourself and just know that you are the answer here and what you seek is already there within you. Do not get in your head, okay? So I could go on forever, pile number one, because you're in for something here, Um and I do want to apologize for any suffering you've experienced because I don't think you've suffered any joy yet, okay? I don't feel you have. I feel like you're about to experience joy. And I think there is some joy um, in you knowing that you're no longer in a very dark place. So that is absolutely beautiful. But, I mean, that's still not the joy of this. That's just being thankful and grateful that you're now lifted out of a place that I think was not good. Okay, I, I don't think it, it felt good at all. So I do apologize that you had to go through that dark night of the soul, that you had to go through suffering. Um, but trust me when I say that this is the most beautiful thing that could possibly happen to you. You're going to find yourself at the end of the day. Okay, now this person's a whole other issue. Um, but I think what Spirit wanted to communicate was where you're kind of at and what this journey overall kind of is looking like. If you are drawn to another pile, your message could certainly still be there. I don't know. Um, and maybe more focused on maybe the other person. I don't know. Um, we'll see. But either which way, if you haven't subscribed, please do so. I love you guys very, very, very much. And I am so grateful to be here. I will see you soon. Bye-bye. Hello, my gorgeous angels, Grimalkins, Curious Cats, Tarot, pile number two. Beautiful. I cannot wait to get into this reading. Uh, first, I wanted to thank you so, so much for joining me today. Um, we're looking at this soul connection you have with this person, okay? I'm calling it Twin Flame just to uh, give it some sort of um, uh, a label so that whoever needs to find this can find this video, although we don't need to label it so much as understanding there's a, a special soul connection here, a very uh, deep spiritual connection to somebody here, and we know we're on a journey. But we don't know where we're at so much or we want to check in with where we're at on this journey. Okay, so that's what this is all about. We're looking at where you're at on this spiritual journey um, with this person. And like I mentioned for one, I don't know if we're going to get two energies here. One energy um, could be you, could be your person's energy predominantly. Both. I will tell you exactly as I see it. Although what I'm asking is where are you at uh, in this journey? Where's this connection at? Okay, like, are you guys, like, where are you at um, overall in this journey? And we'll look at some guidance as well. Okay, what are you supposed to kind of be doing or focused on? Or what do you need to be reminded of or stop doing? Okay, so spirits, clear and concise message here. Uh, spirit saying to stop with the tarot. I'm going to stop with the tarot and I'm going to pull some oracles for now. Clear and concise message for pile number two in regards to where are they at in this journey with their twin flame, with their soul person. Where are they at? Clear and concise message, spirit. And thank you so much.
Pile number two for allowing me to tap into your energy, the energy around you at this time. I am truly blessed. Spirit, please protect me and the viewer as I channel this message for the greatest and highest good of pile two. Thank you very much. All right, so we have boat receiving what you need. Progression, arriving, moving on, closure, issues. Okay. Uh, begin. Mm. Uh, okay, we have boar. And we have hen. Hen came out for pile one. Boar and hen. Okay, I'm going to pull some of these. Hmm. We have Master Alchemist 5-5 five five with a Violet Flame Activation. And we have Beyond Illusion 6-6, six six, Change Your Perception. And I feel two of these. And we'll put some cards right there. We have Third Chakra. It says the energy of the solar plexus chakra helps us to realize who we are and what we want to be so we can set a course towards our goals and presence 32 or number five again we have five five here uh, the energy of presence supports our ability to focus our full attention and stay in the here and now now we can pull the tarot so far, we have the Queen of Pentacles in reverse. I'm reading them as they are here. Queen of Pentacles is Earth energy, Virgo, Taurus, Capricorn. We have Temperance, Sagittarius energy in reverse. Queen of Pentacles was in the exact same spot for pile one in the upright. And the hen, like I said, came out for one, so I don't know if it is a tide in any way. We have the chariot, Cancer energy. We have the sun, beautiful, that's um, Leo energy, divine masculine energy. Mm, okay, sorry, I'm getting downloads. Um, okay, just uh, bear with me. Two of cups in reverse, and bottom of the deck... We have the Ace of Cups. I don't read bottom of the deck in reverse. We have Queen of Cups under that. Cups, cups. More cups. Okay, so give me just a little bit here, okay, to tap into this energy. Okay, um, so... I feel this is an early stage of realization in this journey. Now, this doesn't mean that it's that you haven't been on it for maybe 10 years, five years, one year. I don't know how long you've been on this journey with this person because it could be long. But in the journey itself, we can get hung up in certain parts of this journey because we might not be... Um, kind of engaged in what we're supposed to kind of be doing in order for us to ascend, in order for us to move forward, in order for things to progress in a way that is beneficial for us. And so I don't know necessarily what you've been doing so much. So this could very well be um, the other energy, not your energy. I don't know. Only take what resonates here. But whatever energy I'm reading here is somebody who has been uh, potentially asleep, okay, um, and is waking up to what they're supposed to be doing. And what they're really supposed to be doing here um, is focusing on themselves and detaching from things that no longer serve them in their life with the violet flame. Disconnecting from people, places, things, uh, activities, changing their whole perception, how they live their life, what they are used to, how they perceive things to be, being now in control, in charge of themselves, but being honest and being in the moment um, of really being aware and being and, and observing themselves, okay? Because I feel like whatever energy I'm reading here has been very stubborn and I feel like... Um, they haven't progressed from the root chakra of ascension, meaning, because I, I don't want to assume everybody knows exactly what I'm talking about here, but 
when we are in 3D, third density in uh, energy, we are like the majority of the people in the matrix. And as we know, these twin flame connections, spiritual soul connections are very, very, very spiritual. They don't happen in 3D before they happen in the 5D, which is all spiritual. Okay, that's where it begins. So what's happening here is if we're engaged in 3D energies, still in our solar plexus, then we still haven't graduated to the 5D, okay? We go 3D, 4D, and we get to um, tap into the great potential here, spiritually, of what where this connection is tied to in order to bring in that spiritual energy so we can manifest here in the 3D. But if we continue to engage, as we do in the 3D, we continue to unfold the same way we always have, which is stuck in the same patterns and living our lives in the comfort zone of how we've continued to be and we can do this continuously or we can accept the journey and we can change how we see ourselves and say hey wait a minute am i aligned with a version of me that is to the highest calling of who i am spiritually and shedding any conditions okay this is what I'm seeing here. So this person is now, boom, triggered, okay? So this person is triggered because I do feel like this person is now waking up to knowing that they have the help available to them, that they are able to change how they're engaged with their environment, that they can be in control here of what they're creating. They don't have to stay in some sort of stubborn energy. They are not dependent on any one or thing around them. Okay. Because I feel like this person might have been very dependent on the 3D world. So this person is needing to get balanced, is needing to understand how they're engaged in this 3D world, what they do, how they show up is a, a level of how much progress they make towards what they're supposed to be moving towards, okay? Because I feel like this person is needing to get very clear and certain with change perception and the sun talking about illuminating, um, clear and certain in, in their direction. And, and I feel like this person might have been not knowing where they were going or they weren't even thinking about it because they could get just stuck in some sort of rat race here okay so i feel like this person is now in an energy of still in uh, um the lower three chakras although the third chakra is moving into the heart chakra okay because we go from our roots to the um to the sacral to the solar plexus so at least there's ascension there but after this third chakra we open up our heart chakra and that's where sometimes we experience a lot of pain when we have blockages okay the energy moves through us and so i feel i hope i'm not getting too energetic here with you guys but those of you guys who are on this journey i, I don't want to assume that you know what's going on here so i'm going to try to back up a little bit here and for those of you guys i do apologize if you're understanding this and this might be a little bit uh, too much info but Twin flames, okay, we, we are one, we share one, um, one soul and we're split into two bodies, okay, and this is what triggers us spiritually. We meet our other part of ourselves, our, our soul essentially wakes us up, re reminds us who we are. So it starts in the spiritual realm and the divine feminine gets triggered, okay, generally the divine feminine now that doesn't mean that um she has to be born a female that's gender and i'm not talking gender i'm only talking energy divine feminine triggered because she recognizes something she goes through a very profound spiritual experience okay that's all happening in the etherals in the 5d it's nothing to do with what's happening here in the material world although it does catch up What's happening here, what I see, is that somebody here um, is, their energy is moving from the primal energy towards the heart center. And so when the masculine and feminine, feminine energy, if you know anything about the chakras, okay, we have the divine and the, the, the divine masculine on the base 
of the uh, chakras, right? And we have the divine feminine in the top of the chakras because she is more spiritual. She's more intuitive, okay? She is more ruling the three, the top three, and then we have the heart chakra, and then we have the divine masculine ruling the bottom. So when she gets triggered, she is working through a lot, okay? A lot mentally. She's working through a lot spiritually, and she opens up the heart chakra, okay? And it's painful. And every time there's a block, okay, this is why she has soul death here, because what she believed in some sort of ideology, some sort of something here um, that she was attached to or that had blocks or memories or whatever have you, it, it, it jams the energy. And so as the energy comes down, we have divine masculine energy here and he needs to get triggered in order for him to ascend so that they can meet in the heart chakra okay because this is the middle chakra in which divine masculine and feminine meet so what i'm seeing here is this divine masculine is now over here which some people don't even get to um this solar plexus okay they stay kind of here survival mode addictions not really mm, confident enough to pick themselves up to understand that they are empowered to do things that they can believe in themselves that they can um take the power in their own hands that's what this is all about okay but when we graduate to heart we understand that the universe controls everything that we aren't responsible for outcomes solely that we can do what we can but we're acting out of love and so when this opens it is very very painful especially if we've experienced a lot of trauma okay because when we experience trauma we open this heart space it's connected to a lot of emotions that we have to deal deal through and a lot of blocks okay so i don't know i'm not a teacher i just felt i needed to explain this so that we know this person is now in this third chakra and they're opening up their next sort of ascension into the heart now it's not automatically the heart is open and that's it there's a process okay and there's a lot of steps when we go from third uh chakra to our heart chakra okay because we're opening up the 4d we're going from 3d to 4d because heart chakra is all about 4d and 4d is gradual because we can't maintain 4d until we learn all the lessons clear the blocks and do what we need to do so I am not saying this person needs to clear every block in order to come together with you. All I'm saying, if this is another person, I don't know if this is you, but what I am saying is that this person is now entering into a heart space, is now open to understanding that how I used to see things is not necessarily the way things are, that they're now going to move forward and add some balance because they are now open to what is different than how they've always done things before being very present in the moment will allow them to see things rather than just dismiss them as same old same old and acting out of subconscious okay so i feel as though this connection hasn't come together there is no union there's no coming together yet because i think this person is needing to see okay they're needing to see um and they're headed there i feel this person is headed there they've been not balanced and i feel like this person has not showed up i feel like this uh connection has been lopsided um this person's been dependent like i said on matrix things pro probably other people or um not taking accountability for where they are in life so i do feel like they're opening their heart space with this ace of cups that's what this is self-love opening the heart space okay um this is an emotional new beginning so this is a very positive reading although it sounded like it wasn't all that positive i do feel as though this is divine masculine energy and i do feel like divine masculine here is now understanding the significance of something here okay he may not get totally up into the top chakras he doesn't really need to so much all he understands is that he is ascending okay and he's ascending because he is now seeing things differently instead of maybe being victim, instead of maybe not being confident in self, instead of maybe leaning in on addictions, instead of maybe um, being very tied to certain um, material things, he is now understanding he has confidence. He's now understanding and moving towards the heart chakra. Or he could have, I just heard for some of you guys, came out of the... Um, 
the sacral, okay? Root, sacral, solar plexus, and here's the heart. So this is for those of you guys who know that this person has been fairly lacking in self-confidence. This person is now beginning to enter into the field of confidence, into being empowered, into identifying that they have control in some way, which is much better than being re reactionary, okay? This is people who have addictions, who just, you know, I don't know, like have sex for the sake of it, um, do things here without question. They're kind of given into their animal impulses. They don't feel safe and they've experienced a lot of trauma and a lot of people might get stuck here, okay? Some people uh, ascend to this sacral, or sorry, solar plexus, sorry, this is the sacral, the solar plexus, which is these people that make things happen. They're empowered, they're confident, they're driven, okay? This is a good energy, although we know when we ascend, this is lower matrix stuff. Heart is the center. We start to feel heart-centered. None of this sort of matters anymore, okay? It's how much love and kindness, and then we open up to the top chakras, which is all about the unseen, the intuition, the downloads, um, and being fed information um, from 5D, from source, which guides us into new sort of dimensions, okay? We're not in a rat race. So this person could certainly have graduated from this second chakra to the third chakra, or they could be going from this third chakra to the heart. I do feel very strongly now that I, I, I pick up this energy. This person is going from sacral to solar plexus okay that's what i feel i don't feel like this person is totally getting into their heart chakra that message is for some of you guys where you you see that this person um might be going through uh, a very challenging time okay if this person seems like they're around they're confident they're showing up they're most likely not here yet because I feel like once they get here, there's going to be a pulling away in, in sorts of dealing with things, okay? Um, and someone who was pulled away is now showing more confidence. Someone who was pulled away or maybe a little more in their primal energy is now understanding something here in a, in a different sort of fashion. So a lot of uh, information here uh, on this energy. I really hope I'm doing this justice because I don't want to confuse things. But if you are on this journey, I think this is going to make sense to you. I'm going to pull the um, advice cards because I do want to give advice. What spirit is wanting you as the viewer to know what you're supposed to kind of be doing here. Um, spirit advice guidance for pile number two. In this journey, what is the guidance? What are they supposed to be doing? Or what are they supposed to know here? Okay. We have... Yeah, this uh, it's interesting because we only have one energy here. Um, not two of you guys. And so maybe you needed to know where your person was at. Or maybe you wanted to know where you were at. But you know, where this person is at, like I said, is, is going... Um, is ascending, but it is a kind of a slow process here. Okay, so surrender fear. This is fear. Let go of the fearful stories you are telling yourself. Stay in the moment. Focus on solutions and celebrate every baby step forward. Yes, this person has been very focused on bottom two chakras. Could be definitely divine masculine energy. Surrender to the beauty of the natural world. Take a relaxing break and spend time in nature. Replenish yourself by feeling the beauty and the ecstasy there. This came out for one, so it definitely could be tied. Uh, this could be uh, the flipped person, okay? Um, so if this sounds like your person, your energy could be in one, predominantly, um, and vice versa. So I do feel like the advice here is for both parties to open up to the natural world, which is getting in tune with their authentic self. This comes through nature. This comes through being um, walking in the park, being barefoot, grounding self, understanding and being present in the moment. Okay, this will trigger us to questioning and looking at how we live our lives. Because if we're in a rat race, we don't see things, we're acting out of subconscious, but we have to be very aware, very present, okay? Surrender to the magic of who we are, who you are. Yes. So we all have magic in us, even in the mundane aspects of life. Remember that you are a magical being with the uniqueness and worth that come from just being you. That's what this is, just being you. There's no need to be anything but you. 
and allow the journey to take place because I do feel like this journey is going to happen whether we know what's happening or not know what's happening but we could um suffer mentally we can exhaust ourselves we can make the journey unpleasant by not knowing resisting and needing to know and all this or we can open up to the journey accept the journey be as grounded as we can accept the magic and be very present okay and that's hard to do especially when we've been in the matrix i see a boat i see a chariot so i feel like things are moving things are definitely progressing this energy is definitely ascending so this is a good thing things are moving but there is a lot of focus on the violet flame activation and i do feel there is um a lot of meditation on youtube with the violet flame activation which is going to help in um detaching from a lot of the uh 3d material matrixy things that might still be lingering okay we have dove spirit be peace 21 yes peace is important that comes through being in nature that comes in being who we are without judgment okay so when we start to say i should have done this or i can be better or, or looking looking at our actions and passing judgment we then aren't at peace because we're making judgment so we need to embrace how we are but we need to question and say is this for the greatest good of love is this my highest capacity what is my intention is my intention selfless is my intention out of love is my intention for the best possible outcome for this person and for me despite us coming together or is there a a, a selfish uh, a selfish need for me to have what the ego is wanting in this connection okay am i chasing up on an ego or am i allowing things to kind of be in flow and if it makes me feel frustrated or or, or um if i feel like uh, i'm constricting in some way we gotta ask why why are we not at peace something inside of us needs to be looked at that's where the trauma is okay that's where we need to look at ourselves and say why do i feel what i'm feeling nothing to do with this person's making me feel i feel a certain way because there's something going on within me and then we look at it okay and we, we are honest with it so badger spirits be fearless and bold yes surrender fear this is if there's something that is i feel like this is advice for this person so you very much could be this energy i don't know but i feel like I mean, both parties are going to have to surrender and be fearless and confident and trust themselves. But I feel like this is for this person who is really hesitant um, in opening up, okay? Because I do feel like there is a hesitation in allowing self to just be, allowing self to be vulnerable, allowing self to be visible and open and natural um, and expressive as well, okay? So... I don't know necessarily that this energy is at peace because I feel like there's a lot of uh, constricting of self here, okay? So if you're relating with this, then Spirit is saying to allow yourself to be fearless. Allow yourself to express self. Dolphin Spirit, this and that are true. Love, 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 love this card for you guys because this is talking about what I'm saying here, which is, if this person, because I, I've done a lot of readings where people say this person's done this, this, and this, and this, and it's like, yes. And if I say that's okay, it's like, I'm, I'm justifying that that person ignored you. I'm justifying this person didn't pay attention. I'm justifying that they didn't give to the situation and it makes people angry. And what I say is that this person is in their shadow. This person does not know how to give you we're giving. Yes, this and that are true. This person wasn't intending on hurting you and you're hurt. The truth of the matter is that this and that are true, that this person could not have intended to hurt you and still hurt you. And that it could still be true that you don't want to get hurt, but you're hurting yourself by maintaining in an energy of allowing repeat patterns, attachments, fear to keep you in pain okay and you might think you want the best and i believe that you may want the best here but is it the best out of the ego or is this coming from a selfless place of love okay and that's what this and that are true 
because it is difficult when we start to deal with ego, when we start to really peel back the layers and say, am I wanting an outcome here? Is this why I'm upset or frustrated with this person? Because they're not giving what my ego is desiring and craving right now. Okay, so remember, listen that are true before getting angry or getting upset or letting our emotions fly away and start putting blame or passing uh, one sort of understanding when there's multiple understandings. And we have, and that I'm not excusing anyone to treat you poorly. If someone treats you poorly, you know what to do, right? Because nobody can treat you poorly with it continuing unless you allow it to continue. So what do we do? We uh, have to acknowledge our involvement as soon as we can. As soon as we identify suffering, as soon as we know we're suffering, and that's our, our emotions. Our emotions are the telltale sign that there's something going either very good or very bad and when the emotion is negative okay now there's no such thing as a negative emotion but fear doubt jealousy if we feel these feelings there's a trigger saying there's something needs to get looked at so this is a good thing that we're feeling as we look at it and we gotta understand where it's coming from from ourselves flamingo spirit embrace the in between 26 Awkward stage because I do feel there's a transition here going from this to this, okay? And like I said, for a very small few of you, this person's going from this chakra to this chakra. So I hope this makes sense because I'm talking about going from chakra to chakra. So it, it, you're here, obviously you're spiritual. You understand energy in some way. This person energetically is ascending, okay? And, and I feel like the embracing in between is awkward, especially... It could be awkward for the other person too because we don't understand what's going on with the other person so we start to have fear is this person pulling away is this person doing what they need to do or we start to question whether we are going backwards right when we're in the transition we start to or our whole world explodes and it's like oh my gosh like i don't know what's right anymore so we feel backwards, but really the reality is we're not backwards, we're forwards because now we've shattered the illusion. Now we have nowhere to go except forward, okay? Nowhere to go except forward movement because now we've shattered whatever sort of illusions and we're in this weird in-between place, okay? And the in-between sometimes sucks worse than the pain because it feels upside down. For some people okay some people like the in-between because at least they're not suffering but it really depends the in-between could be very awkward and it could be very no direction okay void like almost so embrace this because every step of this journey is movement so if there is a change energetically whether it is in the in the negative Okay, no contact, uh, an argument of sorts, something's happened here, you feel more removed from your person. That means there's a lesson happening here in which we're having to look at so we can then ascend to uh, the next phase of this journey or we cannot learn and repeat again and again until we learn from it, all right? So this is your reading, pile number two. These readings are very intense. I really hope I'm not... Um, barking at you uh i just feel like this is the only way i can deliver this message uh there's probably many other ways but uh, this is how it came out all right so i love you very much i hope this helped you and i will see you soon bye bye hello my beautiful pile number three you picked the movie tarot love 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 to do your reading we are looking at the connection you're in this soul connection i'm calling it twin flame although you don't have to label it as such but this is for soul connections deep spiritual connections okay which i will be calling twin flame um in order for people to find this and to assist but this is a journey unlike any journey you've ever had okay so we want to know where's this journey at like where are you at where's this person at where's the connection at okay um I don't know if we're going to get solely your energy or solely your person's energy. We will see as the cards come out, but I will ask Spirit to communicate to you where the journey is at so that you know whether these things are progressing, are they halted, is there movement, is there what's going on, and then we'll get some guidance as well. All right, what should you be doing or can you be doing or what you should stop doing, start doing, etc., etc. Um... So yeah, that's what we're going to do. I want to thank you for being here. And I want to ask spirits to protect me and the viewers. I channel this message.
clear and concise message for the greatest and highest good of pile number three. I will pull the oracles first as I'm being guided to do so. Wow, that one went flying. We have boar and we have hen. Very interesting. These both came out for pile two. There could certainly be a tie to pile two. All right, so spirit, clear and concise message for pile three. What, where's this journey at? We have boundaries. Yikes, okay, keep going. We have mask. Oh, and we have a whole bunch, and I feel like we are going to be needing these. So we have mask, not uh, showing true feelings, hide, personality, pretend, delude, and gaslighting. Self-indulgence, focus on self, self-worth, time to heal, shadow work, self-appreciation, and girl talk, time with friends, moving on, happily single, living in the moment, having fun, and passion. In insane chemistry like each other equally and having fun okay um we'll pull some of these spirits clear and concise message for pile number three where is this journey at we have divine masculine energy five five with releasing lower self Interesting, because if you do feel tied to any other pile, one or two, because I do feel there is a tie here, uh, I go into the chakras, okay, uh, which could be a lot of information, but if you're curious as to the Twin Flame journey and the chakras, the Divine Masculine is, um, the Divine Masculine is ruling the bottom three chakras, the root, the sacral, and the solar plexus, okay, the Divine Feminine rules the top three chakras crown okay and third eye and the throat chakra and then they meet in the middle spiritually which is the heart chakra okay so right now this card is telling me releasing lower self is this here where the divine masculine releases lower energies in order for him to go from third density into fourth density which is heart space this is 4d okay so that's what that is about I hope that um, that gives you an idea now if it, it doesn't if it's not clear you can go watch those other piles because I explain it a little bit differently more in depth yes surrender one one dark night of the soul okay my goodness all right so let's pull two of these and then we'll pull some tarot as well spirit clear and concise message for pile three we have Forgiveness, 20. The energy of forgiveness strengthens our capacity to let go of unwanted feelings and emotions. That is this, okay? Our emotions is all in the sacral chakra. Uh, and that is what's happening right now, okay? Our traumas and our emotions. We have freedom, 21. The energy of freedom supports our sense of limitless possibility and potential, boundless expression and bold exploration. Interesting. Okay, let's pull some tarot. Spirit clearing concise message here for the greatest and highest good of pile three. I'm going to read it as it fell out. We have the page of cups in reverse. The hangman, Pisces energy. The hierophant, Taurus energy in reverse. Why is this page of cups here, spirit? Five of Swords in reverse. Why is this hanged man here? The Fool. And finally, why is this... That's your card right there. Two of Wands in reverse. Bottom of the deck energy. We have the Hermit Virgo energy. And then the Ace of Wands under that with Bruce Lee. All right. The Hermit. Okay. Give me just a little bit here to see what's going on. Well, we definitely have a runner here. <laughs> run, Forest, run. Okay. I think I'm reading for a runner here, uh, and I do feel it is reading for Divine Masculine Energy. Okay. Um, what's happening with this Divine Masculine Energy? I feel this is very, very, very similar to Pile 2, except Wiles probably tapping into Heart Energy. 
uh, there at first initially was the graduation from the sacral into the heart. Okay, that's the ascension. I feel like this person is ascending into heart space and this is very painful. This is Dark Knight of the Soul stuff, which I talked about in Pile 2. So this Divine Masculine has been a runner. This Divine Masculine was not committing. This Divine Masculine was Five of Swords. And had a lot of work to do and was very distant and might have kept you out and wasn't being himself. And I feel as though you have been focused on self, doing what you need to do. You still care for this person. I feel you're very attracted to this person. I feel this person is very attracted to you. I feel as though you have not been so concerned with where this mm, Divine Masculine is at. I feel like you've been doing your own thing, hanging out with friends. Living in the moment, having fun, moving on, happily single, da 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 okay? And as you do this, because I feel like you might have been in this challenging situation for a bit, you have been learning to love self, focusing on having fun, what you can do in the moment, and firing up your passions. And so what I feel has been happening as you focus on self, and you understood your self-worth, and you focused on your healing, your twin flame person, soulmate person, is now having to face whatever they're having to face here when it comes to their shadows, their own self-worth, looking at their own masks, being honest with their true feelings, getting out of stubborn energy, not being um, in whatever energy they were here, which requires a lot of forgiveness because when we heal traumas in our emotional body and we release a lot of the blocks in our lower chakras, it hurts, okay? But I feel like this Divine Masculine is setting himself free. Free from all these traumas that have been holding him back. So if this Divine Masculine has been stuck with addictions, has been stuck with low self-confidence, has been stuck with doing things here that aren't for the greatest good, this Divine Masculine is now shifting um, from this and learning to surrender, learning to go through detachment and shedding ego, which is very painful because this mask is all about ego. When we are living a lie of self and we might believe it to be true, but when we peel back the layers, we realize it's not true at all. And so it's the dark night of the soul because then we lose who that is and we don't know who we are. So I say divine masculine, okay, doesn't mean gender, doesn't mean this is male for sure. This is just the runner in the connection or the person who was maybe not as cooperative, who might have been more distant, keeping out uh, the other energy I feel here. Um, and I do feel as though this person is coming into a new perspective, okay? The new perspective allows them to see things differently. Although I do feel this connection kind of stuck still. It's not moving forward. I do feel like this person has not opened their heart space yet. They are going through what this looks like, okay? Because I feel like there's a need to open the heart space. It's a need to come out of challenging energy. And then there's a need to commit some sort of commitment here to this connection. But it requires them to look at their ideology. It requires them to look at what do they value in their life right now? Have they been giving their time and attention to something that is not of value? that is not of a greater purpose, something that they've been conditioned to maybe believe uh, like an ideology that I'm meant to, I don't know, be stuck in some sort of matrix world or, you know, live in, in party town or not be in a, in a committed connection because I'm single and that's how I live. Whatever ideology here, conditioning structure they had as a belief needs to be looked at. And I feel this person is looking, okay? Because what I think is happening here is this person has not chose this connection and did not choose the path of this connection, which is the path of exploration. So what are they doing right now? I think this person is looking and understanding and has a, a different perspective on they can take a leap of faith. They can explore something they don't know as with open arms saying, I don't know where I'm jumping into. Um, and, and they're looking at this as something that they can risk, that they could take a, a chance on, okay? But I don't feel they've taken the wand yet or made the decision to commit because they are doing the introspection. This is the work, the hermit. This is looking at what do I want? 
how can I forgive parts of what's happened to me? What do I need to shed? Okay, so this person is going through Dark Knight of the Soul stuff, and they're not moving forward, okay? Ace of Wands in reverse. This is the Two of Wands in reverse. They're not moving forward with the passion. And I feel like the passion is this connection. I feel like the passion is to allow themselves to open up, but that would require them being vulnerable. That would require them graduating into this heart space because this is unconditional love. This is open to love, not being held back by experiences that we've uh, that left us traumatized and saying, I will never open up again. I will, you know, continue down whatever path that I've been continuing because I believe it to be safest for me because we're acting out of trauma and we're acting out of an upbringing or an understanding that might not allow us to ascend into green heart based energy. Okay. From 3d to 4d. So this person's still in 3d energy going into 4d energy. Uh, I hope I'm not too metaphysical here for you guys. I try to keep this very simple for those of you guys who aren't so, uh, in that sort of energy explanation. But this is a good thing because this is ascension. This is your person going into heart-based uh, activation. And as you know, because I, I have no doubt in my mind, you've gone through a dark night of the soul. And not all twins go through a dark night. Okay, sometimes only the divine feminine, uh, as she ascends spiritually, she goes through a dark night. But there is a version of dark night of soul in which most people uh, on this journey are understanding their fake self okay they get closer to their authentic self and that's what's happening here so it may not be as intense as maybe what you've experienced because i do feel what's coming through is you've experienced an intense dark night of the soul okay so this person might not be you know crying on their knees uh for four months straight uh although depending how attached they are to the hierophant this person could certainly be uh, removed um, and having to sort through this, but it does humble you and it humbles you very quickly. So this person's being humbled, I feel. Let's take a look at some guidance from spirits. I will be reading these. Guidance from spirit for pile number three. Spirit, what does pile three needs to hear in regards to guidance? I've got four of those, okay. Surrender, oops, give me a second. Okie dokie. It's a surrender your attachment to results. The formula for success is to do all that you can to make things happen and then you let it go. Oh yeah, then you let go of the results. Holding on too tightly to a desired outcome can sabotage it. So I think you know this, but it, you may have to keep repeating yourself because you're on a journey where you can't control another person here okay and it, it drives you nuts because you can't just pull the parachute and escape especially if you're in a true twin flame journey okay we cannot escape the journey um because it's a spiritual one that happens it is happening to us but we do have control um over ourselves and how we perceive things and how we engage and as we ascend we no longer are controlled by our emotions and where this journey is sort of making us feel like we're suffering. We're now enjoying, we're now embracing, we're now ascended. We're now in charge of our own ability to love and give love, despite whether this person's here or not here. Okay. That's where you're headed. And you might have not have completely uh, detached from the outcome, or you might occasionally fall back in expecting some sort of outcome here, but spirit is reminding you to not expect an outcome here because there is free will and this person might take their sweet time. We don't know what this person is doing um, aside from knowing that they're opening their heart space. So that's a good thing. Okay. Surrender your ego. Yes, because when we are attached to results, when we feel we can control an outcome, another person, a situation, we are doing so out of ego. Okay. So if you've done a lot of ego work and you know that you're not attached to where this person is at, I say this person and it could certainly be your energy okay if this is your energy this person is having to this person i'm reading is having to shed their ego this is this dark night of the soul this is questioning why we believe something to be true or are we conditioned to believe this who who said that you know there needs to be an equal give and take in some sort of way in, in a connection and if that's so then where does that stem from? And is it your ego asking for something? Or can you unconditionally love another human from a heart space 
and give unconditional love and not expect to have a connection of uh, a relationship in the 3D. Okay, I know that's a lot to wrap our mind around, but I feel someone's needing to hear this. And I've done a lot of readings like this where I am trying to communicate where the power is. The power is in letting go of ego. And if we feel like we're trying to attain something, even though our heart might be in a good place, thinking it's for the best, for the best for who? Okay, is it our ego that wants this in the, in the, in the timing that is right for ego? Or is this surrendering to spirit and allowing the best thing to happen unfold, even if it means never being with our twin? Now, I, I don't believe these journeys are for us to never be with our twin. Although I do believe that we get stuck and sometimes we get stuck for long periods of time on these journeys because we're not wanting to look at our ego. We're not wanting to do the work. Okay, so if you do the work, then trust in spirit to allow things to happen on the other side. Okay, surrender negative thinking. You have control over your thoughts. When negative thoughts surface, say thank you for sharing and quickly refocus on positive affirmation. So this isn't delusional. This isn't saying I'm suffering right now and I'm going to ignore it. This is if a thought comes to your mind, it is just a thought. We don't attach to it. We don't attribute emotion to it. We let it go through us and we say thank you for coming. We don't repeat the same thoughts and start to talk negatively or attach heavy charged emotions to it because we get stuck. So if a thought comes in, try dismissing the thought. If there's an emotion that's tied to it and it needs to be addressed, then we look at the emotion devoid of thought. Okay, we don't make judgment. We look at the emotion, we let it surface and we say, why are you here? What's making you feel this way? And then we go beyond the ego and we don't say, is it because of an external thing? It's where within me is the answer. Where within me can I understand about myself? Because you are whole and complete, perfect love without somebody else. Okay. So if you're stuck in the thinking, negative thinking pattern, there's a need to detach from this. Now, I do feel as though this person that I'm reading, again, if it is you, then certainly wouldn't understand what it is I'm saying here. Okay, this person isn't maybe as ascended enough to understand, they, they understand the concept, but they don't understand the experience of this. If you understand this, spirit is reminding you to maintain this as your person goes through opening their heart chakra. Okay, flaming, flaming, flaming spirit, <laughs> the flamingo spirit, embrace the in-between. Funny, this came out for pile one, I don't know, all blending together. But what I was picking up was that the same energy of someone transitioning into another chakra space. So it's awkward, okay, the in between space, because sometimes the in between is very awkward, because we feel like we're going backwards, we don't feel like we're ascending, we feel like everything we might have been working towards, we thought we understood an ideology, we had control, we were in charge, we had boundaries we were confident we were ruling we were moving on and we were very happy and content so we thought and then all of a sudden what the hell we get triggered with the dark night of the soul and we realize we were wearing a mask but we're really transitioning into this heart space because we need to descend from whatever sort of traumas were trapped in here Okay, this is dark night of the soul stuff. This is the lower chakra work that this is talking about. This is releasing lower self. So once we do that, we then release and then we can move forward. So it is a transition and it feels like it's backwards because now we're dealing with root things. Okay, and lower chakra stuff, but it is the transition. It is going uh, from one state into the other. So it's an in-between in energy that might be uncomfortable, okay? But there is progress, there is ascension. We don't get stuck there forever as long as we're not uh, resisting, as long as we're surrendering and we are uh, identifying what is ego. Because sometimes we don't know what's ego and what's love, okay? I, I feel I need to repeat that. Sometimes we don't think it's ego, but it is. And we think it's love and it's not, okay? So elephant spirit, learn from the past. This is coming out again. I feel one, two, and three could certainly all be somewhere in the timeline of the same connection. Okay, learn from the past. Will there be repeated cycles? Maybe in this connection. Okay, because I do feel like um, for this pile, not as much. But I feel like there's been painful experiences here with this person. 
in this connection and I feel it's been cyclical. And so I feel there's a need to learn from the past, meaning let's not do the same thing over and over, expecting different results, because spirit wants us to look inside one of the hermits and say, what did I do to attribute to this? And I'm not victim shaming, not saying you were the reason you caused the pain. What I'm saying is because of the pain that I've experienced, what can I then do that I don't need to experience the same thing again? Okay, that I can do that will allow me to be free of pain because there's always something you are able to do, whether you believe you can or not, is where there needs to be a re examining. Okay, but you can learn from the past and not repeat a cycle because if you repeat a cycle, it, it stunts progress here with this person. So, Buffalo Spirits, the abundant universe will provide. Oh my goodness, these are the same cards. And I shuffled, I shuffled in between. I don't know if this came out for one, but I shuffled for two. And I, if this came out for two, I cer certainly shuffle between two and three. So it feels like I've had 10 coffees. I'm getting all wound up. All right, so Buffalo Spirit, abundant universe will provide. What this is saying, trust the universe. You will get who, what, when you need it, okay? No need to control timing. No need to force outcomes. No need to make something happen to convince or pry. This is all about I will surrender and I will allow the universe to provide because the timing that the universe has is absolutely perfect. Whatever unfolds is for perfect timing and will give me exactly what I need for when I need it on this journey. And same with this card. This also came out. Dove spirits, be peace. Okay, this is being at peace, accepting where we're at, not getting all in our uh, ego and in our mind. This is just allowing ourselves to be, trusting in the divine, knowing that if we know nothing about what's to come, we're at peace with that because we know we're perfectly fine, whole and complete, and that the great universe will give us what we need when we need it. Okay, we are perfect as we are without somebody else. All right, I know you desire this person. I know it feels painful when we're not with our twin. And these are emotions we're having to work through, okay? So I hope this helped you. I don't know how else to communicate this. I hope this uh, came through in a way that made sense. I don't know if these readings are making sense or helping anybody. All right, it might be a little bit in the weeds here rather than just how is this person feeling about you, but it was supposed to be more of an in-depth kind of look at the twin flame connection and where you guys are at in the journey. And I feel like this is where one person is at, mostly, predominantly, um, as well as a reminder of guidance. Um, and I'm hoping that the guidance is for the viewer here, okay? So if you are this person, then there might be another pile with your energy in it. Um, and that guidance could have certainly been for your person. I don't know. You use whatever you need to to make understanding, okay? But don't make anything fit. Only you know where you're at with this journey, okay? So if this confirms your own intuition, then you can uh, confirm, claim this message. Um, and I love you guys very much. I will see you soon. Bye-bye. Hello, my gorgeous angels. Pile four, you picked the Wizard's Tarot. I have to tell you, I'm absolutely thrilled um, to be using this deck. I don't know, I'm so excited. But I think I'm more excited for your reading. Don't tell the other piles, of course, unless you came here from the other piles. I don't know what it is. I'm, I'm giddy and I can't wait to get into this reading. And I know I, I generally say that because I love reading tarot. I love uh, delivering message from spirit, but I feel extra special here. There's something exciting. Um, so I do hope there is something different from the other three piles going on here with four. I do feel uh, there could certainly be. So let's look at this. Before I shuffle your tarot, though, um, which I can't wait to do, I'm going to pull the oracle. And what I'm asking spirit here is your connection, the twin flame connection. Okay, I'm calling it twin flame. You can call it a soul connection. You can call it whatever you want. But I'm calling it Twin Flame because I can call it that. This is my channel. Um, and I know that is a label. We don't have to label so much as knowing this is a connection unlike any other. This is a soul connection. It's a spiritual connection. It is very intense. And we want to know where are you at in this journey or where is this connection at with your Twin Flame? Okay, so you might have been on it for a while. Maybe you just started the connection. I don't know. But we're asking where are things at in this journey? between you and your person on this twin flame connection spirit clear and concise message regarding pile number four where's this connection at on the journey 
what this pile number four needs to hear right now in regards to this journey, clear and concise. Please protect me and the viewer as I channel this message. Thank you so much. And thank you so much, pile number four, for allowing me to tap into your energy and the energy around you at this time. I am truly blessed. I don't want these just yet. I think what we're going to do, sorry, is pull these and the twin flame oracle so spirit clearing concise message there's your card and there's your other card and this as well clearing concise message for the greatest and highest good of pile four okay lots of cards let's see what we have we have the wolf wow the skunk and the house cat interesting very interesting all right um we have movement you guys are like thank god it's been stuck forever we have engagement ring don't get too excited y'all engagement ring partnership commitment eternity completion and union all right we have hand of cards Take a chance. Risk being strategic. Options not showing hand and gambling. The Phoenix. New phase. Rekindle. Renew. Transformation. Growth and changed mind. This is a very, very powerful reading right here. Pile number four. Oh my goodness. All right. What do we have? We have 8-8. Eight, eight, speak your truth. Express yourself. All right. We have 5-5. Five, five, the electric creative expression. Wow. Wow. And we have Honor Your Agreement, 8-8, eight, eight, Mission in Motion, Movement, Mission in Motion, Union. All right, Union, Agreement. Okay, Freedom, 21, this came out in Pile 1. It says, the energy of freedom supports our sense of limitless possibility and potential, boundless expression, and bold exploration. Expression, 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 expression. Okay, and then, oh my gosh, expression. You guys just saw me do that? I did, you saw me shuffle. These cards never seem to ever just, uh, okay, let me keep going. <laughs> the frequency of expression supports our ability to bring out our true essence through many different forms of communication. I really feel like I need to read this skunk here, okay? Um hang on one second let me find the skunk book before i get into the tarot and your intuitive whole uh, reading here it's not very long from this book uh let's see first where is the skunkity skunk in this book because it's all jumbled up And we know a Virgo certainly did not put this book together because it doesn't flow. Uh, where is the skunk? Am I blind? There, which means it's about freaking, I don't know, over here somewhere. Skunk, skunk. Here we go. Okay. Alternative solutions resourcefulness as one of the most infamous members of the animal kingdom the skunk is a force to be reckoned with armed with a smelly spray that can drive away even the most aggressive predators the skunk knows how to get and keep what it wants its defensive tactics are also some of the most unique around if skunk energy is present you too could benefit from tapping into your resourcefulness and finding a solution through innovative means if you pull this card it's likely that you've been trusting your tried but true methods to solve a problem but it seems the harder you try the more elusive the solution is consider for a moment the resources that exist outside of you sometimes the answer really does lie in another person seeking the help of someone you respect and trust may be necessary now they will bring not only a fresh set of eyes to the issue but they probably also hold different perspective or approach that may be the key to the lock it may simply be that you need to you need a sounding board, someone who can help 
You get in touch with qualities or tactics you possess that you hadn't thought of yet. Alternatively, it could just be that you need to step away from whatever it is and give yourself some time and space to think about what exact, sorry, to think without actually engaging with it. Step outside the box. Further reflection. In astrology, we look to the axis of Leo and Aquarius as the signs of creativity. Sometimes this can literally be about artistic creativity, but more often it isn't. Both signs bring a unique perspective to things that are good at coming up with creative, sometimes avant-garde solutions to problems. The difference between the two is that Leo wants to stand out from the crowd and allow their gifts to shine, which is to say they want the credit for themselves, while Aquarius seeks uh, to both serve the group and to blend into it. Groupthink isn't always a bad thing, which is one of these energies is necessary now. Remember that even if you don't have any Leo or Aquarius placements in your birth chart, both signs still rule a house or an area of your life in your chart. Research where they are and what it means. Okay, probably didn't have to read that further uh, thing, but that was for somebody there. What's happening here? Why I have to read this is because I feel this is your energy and everything else I feel is your person's energy. And I haven't even pulled the tarot yet, which I will um, in a bit. Because I feel as though you're being asked to do nothing. Okay? Because I feel you've done lots. I feel you've done lots, 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 lots here. And I think your person has been stuck for some time. And I think your person has not expressed themselves. Has not moved forward, has been stuck, has been very much in a cycle. What's happening with this person? This person is being reborn, transforming, because they're taking a risk. They might have been somebody who was not able to be consistent in their affection, coming, going, coming, going, coming, going, like the house cat who gets let outside and wanders and sometimes comes back. We're not quite sure when and is very finicky with how it shows its affection. Okay, but I mean, the house cat is still a domestic house, house cat. So I do feel as though this person has been somebody who has been very independent up until now. Somebody who has been uh, like a lone wolf. Okay, but I do feel this person has a great sense of uh, commitment to family, to a pack. And I feel like this person sees you as family. Okay, so I feel like an energy is shifting here and there is movement and I feel like just like this magic wand here is is waving here. I don't think you see it or even feel it. This person is kind of um, being like a magic wand waving this person from one state of being, which you've known them to be. They have done this through their healing. I think they've been back and forth in and out, taken a lot of time to deal with a lot of what they're trying to heal. But I do feel like they are now taking a risk. They are now being reborn here like this Phoenix with a, with a new sort of changed mind. They've grown into the energy of being able to take risk, being able to provide commitment, okay? Understanding that true freedom isn't in an inconsistency, or I guess a consistent inconsistency, I should say. But true freedom here is in going where their true expression lies, which I feel is in this connection, because I feel like this person is committed to this connection, okay? Now, I don't necessarily think this person is going to come forward and offer you marriage proposal, or even outright, maybe even commit in a way that... Um, is going to, I don't know, like write it on a piece of paper in any sort of way, but I feel energetically what this is saying is that this person is committing to you in a way they have not been able to do this. And for some of you guys, this person is going to verbalize this to you by way of saying you are my whatever the next stage is, okay? Be my girlfriend, be my wife, be my partner, be my whatever my thing is here. Uh, but I do feel like there is a truth here in them expressing themselves most likely for the very first time, okay? And if they have expressed themselves to you in the past, this person has been removed, uh, dealing with things, stuck. And maybe they told you at one point how they felt and it, it's been a long time or you started to doubt because this person might have 
seemed like they changed their mind in some way or they weren't moving forward or you weren't sure where you stood or they went back to wanting their independence in some way. But I feel like this person is now understanding that there could be boundaries, healthy boundaries, but also their ability to communicate what they want for themselves does not automatically tie them to something that limits their freedom because a house cat Okay, um, when they go outside, I mean, the house cat likes its freedom outside. They, some house cats try to escape the minute you open the door, right? And the wolf is very, like I said, independent here, okay? So I'm, I'm picking up a very independent person who is being reborn from um, an energy here of allowing themselves still to be free, but healing parts of themselves that wasn't allowing themselves to express the trueness of this connection. So I do feel like... This person might have at one point in time was honest with you. It could have been when you first met this person, but maybe in their actions or how they've been has not supported um, this, okay? So I do feel like they're keeping an agreement here, and I feel like what the agreement is is the the soul connection, the soul contract you have with this person. That's what this is, is showing me. This is uh, in the Leonard Mom, the ring is a contract. This is your agreement, honoring your agreement, mission in motion, movement. This person is honoring their agreement. They're coming into some form of union here with you. They're now moving towards what they're supposed to kind of be in line with their true expression, speaking their truth, walking their truth, living their truth. And this opens up for a creative outlet I feel here okay for you guys to build something together to create something together so I think this is beautiful but I, like I said I feel your energy here as the skunk is is being told you, there's nothing you need to do okay there's nothing you need to do so now I'm pulling the tarot and I'm going to ask for clear and concise message for pile four spirit what's pile four need to know in regards to where's this connection at this twin flame journey where's this twin flame journey at clear and concise message for pile four so they know what is going on here. Okay. I do feel I want to read these like this and like that and like this. So bottom of the deck, we have the Ace of Cults. Oh, great. Sorry, I think it's the Ace of Swords. Let me just get the box so I don't completely screw this up like I did when I opened this tarot. Okay, so... Cults is pentacles, not swords. Okay, so I'm going to leave this here. So if I fumble, you guys can read this. Um, although I am reading intuitively. Okay, so we have the ace of pentacles. This is a good thing to see at the bottom because this is a new beginning. This is the phoenix rising, but in the material way because there is some sort of a commitment. Now, this isn't so much energy now. I'm feeling more of something being solidified by way of words and by way of an offer of something okay and and proof of something because a pentacle is proof of something so i feel like this person is moving forward with some sort of proof and the fact that i see the sword i feel like this person is communicating something to you okay because swords all about communication and so i feel like they haven't yet communicated what this is but i feel it's communicating an intent to offer a pentacle, an intent to offer some sort of offering of commitment, an intent of a communication here of something for a new beginning in a practical way um, that they want to take a risk of sorts here, okay? Um, I don't know why this, this energy, though, I, I'm feeling like something's unhappy here. Let's keep going. So five of beasts, this is the five of wands, judgment, the nine of cups in reverse the nine of swords in re in the upright the death card that's this phoenix in the reverse the star in reverse and the world oh my goodness okay so we have uh scorpio and aquarius energy here Something's unhappy here. What is unhappy? Maybe unhappy isn't the word, but there is definitely conflict. And I feel like this person has inner struggle right now in, in, in this. So I feel like they're having a lot of anxiety. 
in what they're about to do, but doing it anyway with this uh, hand of cards, okay? Because I, I feel what's happened here is this person has come into with judgments. That's this phoenix, okay? Because this is the rising of the phoenix in judgments. This is seeing the truth for what it is and then having to deal with it. And I think what this person is seeing is that they've been in a reverse death position, a need for significant transformation, a need to rise up and change and accept the truth. But I don't feel this person has. I feel like this person was hanging on to some sort of understanding, miserable because they weren't able to communicate. And in death, uh, reverse is like not allowing things to fall away that needed to fall away, not being reborn, not taking the chance, not expressing themselves and being honest here. Okay, so I do feel this person felt very stuck. But there's a lot of anxiety here because I feel there's fear when it comes to obviously now accepting some sort of judgment, right? So nine of curses, which is the nine of cups in reverse. This is not getting one's wish. And same with this. This means the exact same thing. Okay, not getting what we want, not having the outcome we want. And so I feel like this is speaking to this person experience something recently or is going to experience something outside of your connection with you and them that they don't like that they finally see the light and say i do not emotionally get satisfaction out of what i'm doing here it's not fulfilling for me i no longer want to see this as something that i want to engage myself to that i see this as my happy future because it's not happy i am not emotionally happy continuing doing what i'm doing here so i need to conclude a cycle i need to wrap up an old cycle the world card is a very long period of time where we were in a phase of life and we conclude it okay the world is not repeating a cycle the world is putting something behind us and clearing the playing field the death card clearing it it's gone it's over so person is amidst accepting this truth and it is a lot of anxiety when we wrap up a cycle but this is a successful completion of a cycle but i feel like see the shattering here i feel like there was a shattering of some understanding here there wasn't an, uh, and i think the shattering is not necessarily in regards to you but a shattering of something they might have thought was emotionally fulfilling for them what they thought was their future plan, what they were once very emotionally happy by at some point, thinking this was their ultimate sort of paradise, is now an illusion, is now coming to some sort of crack in the foundation, okay? So there needs to be embracing that if they were to continue wherever they were headed, like this house cat thinking they're free and yet meanwhile maybe returning home and and realizing that i don't know whatever they were doing here was not bringing the satisfaction they were trapped in some way okay and i mean a house cat also feels very trapped when they want to be free so i feel like there's something about them realizing they were trapped in how they were existing and that this connection is the freedom that this connection isn't the trapping of them so i feel like all this anxiety is in understanding a reality of a truth. And that's why we were seeing, um, yeah, this person now wanting to be reborn, having a new beginning here with this Ace of Pentacles. So I do feel they're going to come forward with an offer. And I do feel uh, with the rainbow here, a Ten of Pentacles as well. Okay, so I feel like what today is going to start off as an Ace of Pentacles a promise for a future, an offering, a taking a chance is going to end up as a Ten of Cups. I don't know if I said Ten of Pentacles, a Ten of Cups, which is emotional fulfillment from a single mindset, somebody who emotionally fulfills themselves, to this no longer makes me happy being by myself in a Nine of Cups. I want or two people come together to have a 10 of cups because that's two people coming together to be emotionally fulfilled, build a happy family together, okay? Commitments for a long-term future because I do feel this person was in a nine of cups thinking that they were in a nine of cups for quite some time and now realizing this brings no fulfillment. This is not 
where I want to be, okay? So this person's lost hope in engaging in the same way they always have. The only way for them to move forward is to conclude a cycle and to accept some sort of truth, to offer some sort of communication in regards to a new beginning in a practical way of an offering, because I don't feel this person thinks that they could just energetically promise you something unless it, it's a pentacle here. You know, and, and this will lead to a Ten of Cups, two people uniting, union. Ten of Cups is union, okay? So I think this is very beautiful. This is where this person's at and the Empress in reverse. So are you moved away? Are you detached from this person? Have you removed yourself fully energetically from this person that this person senses it? Could very well be. You might have completely stopped focusing on this person with this Empress in reverse. I feel like you couldn't give a hoot at this point in time okay is kind of what i'm picking up here um and maybe this has shifted the energy in some way okay but i do feel like for those of you guys who do care you're clearly here that this person was blocking the energy in which you were trying to come together with which is divine empress energy unconditional love the feminine energy in this connection which is both sides have feminine energy and a need to allow the empress energy to come out okay whether this is masculine or feminine there was a block here when it came to allowing love to flow allowing themselves to show up in an empress energy okay because a divine masculine is going to have to find his inner empress in order to be receptive in order to be open to love okay in order to find the freedom this is where the expression comes from divine feminine okay so this is what i have um i hope this resonated for you guys this was a beautiful reading you'll have to let me know what's going on here um i didn't pull your advice cards did i although because i do feel your advice was do nothing let's take a look i'm gonna pull some of these because i did for the other piles spirits what is some advice here or guidance that's going to be most helpful in this connection for pile four thank you spirits advice guidance what does pile four need to hear one more two more oh my goodness these came out for every single freaking pile i swear to god okie dokie what do we see surrender your need to always be right give others the gift of letting them be right be yielding not rigid this will help resolve conflicts and improve your relationship so you were right, most likely. And this is frustrating because this person might have been very stubborn. And now they're coming into the light. And now, especially now, there could be room to say, I told you so, or I, whatever. Revel in the rightness. Do not do that. Pile number four. I don't think you will, but that's what Spirit is saying. Because I think there was a lot of hurt. And I think there was a lot of stubborn energy here. But there's a need to support this person and allowing to them to do what they need to do here, okay? So, know you were right, but know you want to be happy. So, support comes through unconditional love and acceptance, not saying, I told you so and I am right. Someone needed to hear that. Surrender to your full power. Your life is calling for you to step into your full power rather than playing small. So, now that we know what's going on here, are we going to be our full shining bright or are we going to mm, take a step back here in order to meet this person at their level? We're not going to meet anyone at their level. We're going to stay where we're at, okay? Although this person is committing, I feel like this person is not at your level, okay? I'm just being completely honest. And so what does this mean when they're not at our level? Does it mean we dim our light? No. Do we play small? No. What do we do then? Well, what we do is we play a supportive role here as best we can. Because I feel like everyone is whole and complete and perfect in the eyes of God, in who they are and how they show up in a connection. And it might take some people longer to find it. And you have found your full power, pile number four, but this person is still finding their way. Okay? So you just stay in your power. There's no need to do anything different. And it might take courage because sometimes... We feel like we need to support someone here by playing small, but that's not the case. Okay, stay in your power. 
Surrender to inner peace, cultivate inner peace on a daily basis in quiet meditative moments. Focus on the stillness within your uh, within and enjoy this inner refuge. Others will feel your good vibes too and your life will flow more easily. Continue doing what you're doing. I feel you are meditative. I feel you are at peace. I feel like you have things most likely in control when it comes to yourself. Your inner peace, I feel it's in control. But when things shift, it's easy to lose control. Now, we're not quite sure what we're doing here um, when an energy shifts here, what we're supposed to be engaged with. And so don't forget your good vibes. Don't forget your meditation. Don't forget your stillness. Don't forget to come back to home to get grounded when you feel like things might be a little different. Okay. Maintain your inner peace, your inner practice. Vulture spirit, nothing is wasted. 63. This is speaking about this. So although the uh, journey I feel was like this, du -du 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 this person all over the place, and maybe you were already new from over here or things could have went, nothing was wasted because every single thing that's happened in this journey was for a reason. And now we're both empowered here. Okay. I feel like both parties are empowered because of what did not necessarily work when it was supposed to work. Okay. Buffalo Spirit, this is the abundant universe will provide. This came out for almost every single pile. This is trust that the person, place, or thing is going to show up when you need it. Perfect timing, perfect situation, perfect things, so things flow. There is no need to chase. There's no need to uh, reject, refuse, coerce, force, doubt ourselves. The universe is providing and is abundant. You will get everything you need when you need it for this connection. It is absolutely on track and absolutely perfect and unwavering. Very, uh, very strong energy I'm feeling here. Very rooted and very unwavering. Uh, strong commitment I'm feeling here, okay? And we have Dove Spirit. Be at peace. Look how beautiful this is. I feel this pile has found union. Now, union is within self. And at 3D level, I also feel there is union here. Union can come and go when we're in uh, um, Twin Flame Connections because we might lose the inner peace and we might start to doubt and fall back in old ways. So it's very important to continue in our spiritual practice, to continue in living in peace, to continue supporting unconditional love for our person. But this is telling me that you've graduated here in some way to take how you feel for this person and apply this to everybody in your life. Okay. And I know that we have a special place for our twin flame because we love them deeply. We're being called pile four to not go back down to the level to meet our twin flame, but to rise everybody to our level, our twin flame and everybody else to see them in the same light this divine empress unconditional love what you feel for your twin flame you can feel for everybody okay and this brings peace on earth this brings healing this elevates the frequency of earth because now you are doing what you were supposed to be doing when you were coming into union with your twin which was raising the vibration of earth when divine masculine and feminine come together they raise the vibration of earth okay that's why these connections happen to bring healing to, to, um, to suffering so that people can see healing on earth so that the vibration is a positive frequency of unconditional love, which is the highest frequency we can be in, okay? But it's not reserved only for your twin flame. It is love you can feel for everybody, okay? Now, obviously, you are selective in the material world to someone who has the qualities of this twin flame that you absolutely adore and that's fine and that's your person but i'm talking about the deep soul unconditional love you feel for your twin is now being called for you to maintain this energy in the outside world okay you can do it and i feel like you can maintain this and this is beautiful and i love delivering this message because it's been a while since i've read this but Congratulations, pile number four. I don't ever give false hope. If you resonated with this, you'll know exactly what this is talking about. All right. And energy does not sit linear. So this isn't exact happenings right here in this very moment. But there is a window of time here in which your energy is vibing towards this. 
union, okay? So keep doing what you're doing because I feel it's working and I feel your person is also picking up from your beautiful positive energy. So this is all I have for you. I hope this resonated. These readings were beautiful, although very long. I do apologize. I hope you stay um, past this graduation period because I can certainly use your help to communicate peace on earth and love and light to everyone who is suffering or going through um, challenging connections such as this one. All right. You do what you need to do, however you do it. I love you very much, and I am always here to support you. I will see you soon. Bye-bye.